Congratulations for answering exercise number 6. Great job! Don't forget to submit your output to your teacher. We're almost done in the study of kinematics. The two remaining lessons deal with motion in two dimensions, projectile motion and uniform circular motion. Now let us begin with projectile motion. Projectile is a body that is given an initial velocity and then follows a path determined entirely by the effects of gravitational acceleration and air resistance. It is a combination of horizontal and vertical motions. In our discussion, we will consider the following assumptions. The projectile moves vertically with constant acceleration due to gravity that is 9.8 meters per second squared. The projectile moves horizontally at constant velocity when the effects of air resistance is negligible. With these two assumptions, basically a projectile is a two-dimensional free fall which has a trajectory of parabola. And when we say trajectory, it is a path followed by a projectile. Depending on the direction of the initial velocity theta sub i, a projectile comes into two types. Type 1 projectile has an initial angle within the range of 0 to 90 degrees, or simply an acute angle. While a type 2 projectile is launched horizontally, that is at 0 degree. The kinematic equations for projectile motion seems tedious but in fact we will use old equations we have encountered before reaching this topic. Now listen very carefully. Since projectile motion is a two-dimensional type of motion, it is convenient to analyze separately its kinematic quantities in terms of horizontal and vertical components. Imagine this is our projectile, let's say a ball. Considering it is a type 1 projectile, it is given with initial velocity v sub i at an initial angle of theta sub i. So this is the trajectory, a parabola. We mentioned a while ago that horizontally a projectile move horizontally at constant velocity and it follows free fall motion on vertical axis. In analyzing any type of projectile, the initial velocity should be resolved into x and y components using the initial angle. To do this, we will use sine and cosine functions. The x component of the initial velocity is v sub i cosine of theta sub i while the y component is v sub i sine of theta sub i. For type 2 projectile, the x component of the initial velocity is also the initial velocity itself since the initial angle of flight is zero. And the y component of the initial velocity is automatically zero. The position of a projectile, as a function of time t, is described by its x and y coordinates x sub f and y sub f, respectively. The initial velocity should be resolved into components and using the initial angle of flight. This is usually the preliminary step in order to solve other quantities such as the position and the final velocity of a projectile at any later time. Keep in mind that a projectile moves horizontally at constant velocity, hence the equation average velocity equal displacement delta x divided by the time interval delta t. So the horizontal position of a projectile x sub f is equal to the product of the x component of the initial velocity and time interval t. For vertical position y sub f, we can utilize free fall equations. So y sub f is equal to v sub i y multiplied by time t minus 1 half g t squared. Or it is 1 half of the sum of the y components of the initial and final velocities multiplied by time. Be careful not to use directly the velocities vi and vf. What we need here are the y components of velocities. As the projectile moves its velocity is changing as well as the angle of flight. So to determine this final velocity v sub f, we need to solve for its x and y components first. v sub fx is also equal to v sub ix, knowing that a projectile moves horizontally at constant speed. For the y component of the final velocity v sub fy, we use again free fall equations. At maximum height, same as with free fall, v sub fy is zero for type 1 projectile. At this location, momentarily, its velocity is horizontally equal to the x component of the initial or final velocity. Afterwards, it begins to fall following the other half of trajectory as it returns to its initial elevation.
Other formulas will be the magnitude and direction of the initial and final velocities. There is no problem here after knowing the x and y components of the velocities. We simply use Pythagorean theorem for the magnitude and the inverse tangent function of a right triangle. For type 1 projectile, we have derived equations for its horizontal range r and maximum height h. Note these are exclusive for type 1 projectile only. Range r is expressed as the square of the initial velocity multiplied by the sine of the twice of the initial angle all over g. While the maximum height h is equal to the square of the y component of the initial velocity over 2g. Lastly, we investigate here the ranges of a projectile launched with the same speed but at different angles. As you can see, a projectile that was launched at 45 degrees has the maximum range. We also observe that ranges are equal for complementary angles. For instance, the range of 15 degrees is the same as its complementary angle 75 degrees. However, their heights are different. Now let's have a final look on the kinematic equation for projectile motion. You don't have to memorize all of these equations, although it is an advantage. If you got a chance to understand the basics of uniform motion and free-fall motion, then definitely you can understand how these formulas were derived and utilized to solve projectile problems. Now let us apply the formulas we have discussed a while ago. Make sure you understand them all and make a list of these formulas as we go along. Problem number 13 A motorcycle stunt rider rides off the edge of a cliff. Just at the edge his velocity is horizontal, with magnitude 9 meters per second. Find the motorcyclist's, letter A, position and letter B, velocity after 0.5 second. So list the given information. The initial velocity of the rider V sub I is 9 meters per second. Since the rider is a type 2 projectile, so his initial angle of flight is 0. We have also given time 0.5 seconds. For the required quantities, the problem requires us to solve for the horizontal and vertical positions, x sub f and y sub f. Also, the magnitude and direction of final velocity v sub f and theta sub f, respectively. Our preliminary solution is to find the x and y components of the initial velocity. We have mentioned earlier that this is a type 2 projectile, Therefore the x component of the initial velocity v sub i x is automatically 9 meters per second while its y component is 0. Then solving for the position at time 0.5 second. The horizontal position of the rider is x sub f equals the x component of the initial velocity times time t, that is 9 times 0.5, so the answer is 4.5 meters. For vertical position y sub f. We will use one of the freefall formula V sub I Y times T minus 1 half G T squared. Substituting the values will give a vertical position of negative 1.23 meter. Remember, this negative sign indicates that the rider is located below the edge of the cliff at 0.5 second. Any questions so far? Can you keep up? Good. Now let's continue. For the magnitude and direction of final velocity, we solve first the x and y components of final velocity. We know that the x component of velocity is constant so v sub fx is also 9 meters per second, same as with the x component of the initial velocity. I guess no problem about that. For the y component v sub fy, we use another freefall formula, y component of the initial velocity minus gt. If we substitute the given information, then V sub Fy is negative 4.9 meters per second. Now, the next step would be the magnitude of final velocity V sub F. So we use Pythagorean theorem formula, square root of the quantity V sub Fx squared plus V sub Fy squared. Pressing on the calculator will give 10.25 meters per second. For the direction A to sub F, inverse tangent of v sub fy over v sub fx, so it is negative 28.57 degrees. Hence, 0.5s later, 
the rider moves at a velocity of 10.25 meters per second 28.57 degrees below positive x-axis. Now, it's time to challenge yourself by answering this exercise. Exercise number 7. A batter hits a baseball so that it leaves the bat with an initial velocity of 37 meters per second at an initial angle 53.1 degrees. Ignoring air resistance. Letter A, find the position of the ball, and its velocity after 2 seconds. Letter B, find the time when the ball reaches the highest point of flight, and find its height. Letter C, find the horizontal range, that is, the horizontal distance from the starting point to the point at which the ball hits the ground. Good luck!